Today we're going to be going into section number four, and this is going to be titled Function Notation. So today we're going to create an expression from described steps, and we're going to evaluate these different functions. Now if you remember, we kind of talked a little bit about functions, we talked a little bit about domain and range of like a given relation, and so today we're going to formally address this new function notation. Now just as a recap, remember that the domain of the function is the set of inputs or what we're plugging into it and most commonly you know that input is going to be x and then the range is going to be all the set of outputs and that's commonly going to be for the variable y. Now we could actually describe this function f as a process in which we can match these inputs with these outputs. Just to remember though an f has only, uh, for whatever input that it has, it's only going to have one output for y. And this is kind of like a, a visual representation of that. So if we take a look at this function notation here, we're going to see this symbology, this f of x. Now, this symbology here is red, f of x. That's how we read it. And so this visual description here is saying that whatever x that I have as an input, how it's going to be mapped to my output or y or f of x, there can only be one. Now for the x variable, another way to name it is we call the independent variable. Now the reason why we call it an independent variable is because it's a variable that we can select. Doesn't matter. It's on its own. Whereas y we call the dependent variable because that y value depends on what x value we pick. And so that's why it's going to have that type of dependent relationship. Now what we can actually do is we can actually construct functions based upon certain sequences. And the only reason why I'm going over this type of practice is because it relates to translations and how uh, functions shift around on a graph. So. In this case here it says suppose function g is described by applying the following steps in sequent determine g of 5 and find the expression for g of x and though this is assuming that g of x equals x. So we start with 5 because g of x equals x so if I plug in 5 I know that that's going to be 5. The first thing is adding me to do is add 4. Then once I add 4 it then wants me to multiply everything by 3. And so simplifying that together, I get 27. Now, if it wants me to find an expression for g of x, that means I start with x, because g of x equals x. Then it's asking me to add 4. And then from adding 4, it wants me to multiply by 3. And so I get 3 times x plus 4. And so this is kind of like a way for us to be able to create functions by steps. Now, like I said, there's not going to be an overwhelming amount of application to that except the fact that once we get to translations and moving graphs and functions around we could follow the translation based upon these types of set of steps and then distributing you know you can say 3x plus 12. Now another type of relationship so that we can uh, examine with functions is evaluating and what we're actually going to do is we take the values and we plug it into the function now the way that we should imagine it is as if these x values are like placeholders. And so what we're doing is we're taking this value here and we're going to plug it into those placeholders. So that means that if it's asking me to find f of negative 1, that means that I do negative parenthesis because it's just a placeholder plus 3 times parenthesis plus 4 and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be plugging in negative 1 because it says plug in negative 1. So that's just kind of like a way for us to imagine or envision it. So let's take a look at it with negative 1 plugged in. Now that we've plugged everything in, the rest is just all simplification. So negative 1 squared, that's going to give me positive 1. I still have the negative 3 times negative 1 is negative 3 and then 4 this is negative 4 plus 4 that gives me 0 and so that's my result now this one here it says that my input is 2x and so I'm actually going to take this 2x and I'm going to be plugging it in in as the placeholder so remember I said we have to envision it 
So f of 2x equals negative, and then I have that placeholder squared, plus 3 times that placeholder plus 4. And so what I'm plugging into that placeholder is going to be the 2x. And so that's how I'm going to be plugging this into my functions. And so when I do that, I get this. Now once again, the rest is all simplifying. So 2x squared, this is going to give me 4x squared. And now I have to take that negative and multiply that through, and this becomes 6x plus 4. And so multiplying that through, I get negative 4x squared plus 6x plus 4. Now, the pattern that I want to go over for both of these is the first thing I did is I performed the indicated evaluation, meaning it said plug in negative 2, negative 1, plug in 2x. I plug those in. Then I need to simplify. And so from there, once it was plugged in, I combine like terms, distributed, etc., combine like terms, multiply things through, etc. Now, once we start adding or subtracting as our input, things do start to seem a little bit more vague. Now remember, my input is x plus 2, and I'm replacing that into my x. So instead of negative x squared, I took out the x, and now it's negative x plus 2 squared, and then 3 times x plus 2, and then I still have that plus 4. Now remember, this is x plus 2 squared, so that's foil. And so that's really, that negative's the same, and then I have x plus 2 and x plus 2. That's going to distribute, and so I have 3x plus 6, and I still have the plus 4. This right here, we got to FOIL that through or distribute that out. And so that gives me x squared plus 4x plus 4. And then I can multiply that negative through. And then now the rest is all combining like terms. And so the negative x squared negative 4x and plus 3x give me negative x, and then minus 4 and 10, that's going to give me my positive 6. Now just remember, the x plus 2 was plugged in for x. Maybe it's almost like a cut and paste. You erase the x, it's now blank, you put in x plus 2. Now it doesn't really necessarily matter what that function looks like, we just need to perform the operation of what it's asking me to do. So on this first one, it's just saying plug in zero. So plugging in zero, this is zero, this is zero, and this is four. And so I just get f of zero equaling four. Now this one might be seem kind of weird. This is saying take two and multiply it by my entire function. And so two times my entire function, which is this statement, which is what we have here. So two times my entire function. And then so now distributing that 2 through, you're going to get negative 2x squared plus 6x plus 8. So in this one it just says f of 2, so that's saying that I need to take this 2 and I need to plug it into my function. And so there it is, I just plug 2. If I treat these as placeholders, I'm just plugging in 2 into there. And so now simplifying this, negative, and I have the 2 squared, so that's going to be negative 4. There's my 6 and 4. Negative 4 and positive 4, that's going to give me 6. Now this one's a little different. This one says take your f of x function and add it to your f of 2 function. And so there's my f of x function and add it to my f of 2 function, which is technically what I just found here. And so I know if I simplify that down, I'm going to get it 6. And so now I take the 6 and I add it to my f of x function. And so I'm going to get this value here. And that's going to be my answer. Now in closing, what did we learn today? Well, we talked about how to evaluate a function and then almost kind of establish an equation with described steps. So you start with a value and then it's almost as if we're kind of adding things onto it and you can kind of see how there are these layers that are being added to whatever we're starting with. Now I'm curious, how would you describe evaluating? So I had my own way of trying to kind of show how it's done, but how did your brain kind of visualize how the evaluating process worked? Now this does conclude our lesson. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments.